we have a table where we're entering data in daily. The table is tracking videos and how long they take to make. But our goal is to just work with the video column to create a frequency distribution. We need a unique list with a total at the bottom, and we need the count for each video with the total at the bottom. Now, the real answer is let's use a pivot table because it takes less than 20 seconds to create. And in a pivot table, the formatting is dynamic. But I don't want that because my goal is to every day enter data and I want my report to automatically update. So this is a situation where you want to go through the complications of creating a dynamic spilled array formula. Now, the formulas we see in this video will work in Microsoft 365. And we're going to see some amazing new functions that are actually in beta, the test phase, but will be out in all of Microsoft 365 soon. And we'll see some great uses for drop and take inside of VStack. Now we want a sorted, unique list. And sort and unique have been out for at least a year in Microsoft 365. And I'm going to point to the video column, close, close. And when I hit Enter, a unique sorted list spills into the cells. Now this is a dynamic spilled array formula. So all the formulas except for the top cell are grayed out. The formula only lives in the top cell, which is I4. Now we need to stack this array on top of the word total. So in the top cell, we hit F2. And we use an amazing new function, VStack. There's array 1. That'll be the top of the stack, comma. And the second thing that's going to be stacked below, well, I'm just going to type total in double quotes, close parentheses. And by the way, we've been building total rows for the last couple years in Microsoft 365. But we had to go through all sorts of complicated hoops with the ifs function and switch and if. So VStack is a welcome addition because it makes stacking things up vertically so much easier. When I hit Enter, now I have a total at the bottom. Now we want to count, so we use count ifs, criteria range, that's the full video column, comma, criteria, well, I have to give it the entire spilled array because as it expands when I add new data, I want count ifs to pick up new conditions. And it will have no problem doing that because look at the syntax for a spilled array. It knows that the formula only lives in the top cell I4. And the spilled range operator says, hey, always get everything that spills from I4. But there's a problem. The word total is never going to be over here. But that's OK. Close parentheses. When I hit Enter, it gives me the correct count for each one of the conditions or criteria at the head of the row, including 0 for total. Now what I want to do to this array is just drop the last row. So in the top cell, I hit F2. Here's another amazing new function called drop. There's the array. And comma, we can drop rows or columns. For rows, if we put minus number, it drops rows from the bottom. Positive numbers, it'll drop rows from the top. We want to drop only the bottom rows, so we type minus 1. Close parentheses. And now when we hit Enter, there's the count. Now we have an array where we can stack up the total count. So in the top cell, F2. We're going to use VStack again. There's array 1, comma, array 2. I'm going to use the rows function to count every single record. That'll give us the total days. Close parentheses, close on VStack, and wow, there it is. Unique sorted list, frequency, and total row. Now the last thing we want to do is add formatting. And yes, it's a hassle compared to a pivot table. But I'm going to highlight enough rows to accommodate every single video I'm going to create. With the active cell in the upper left corner, I go up to Home, Conditional Formatting, and New Rule. We're going to use a formula, Format Values, where this formula is true. Click in that text box. 
and we have to click the active cell. That's the upper left cell. When I click, it puts in absolute cell references, and I want a relative cell reference. So I hit the F4 key one, two, three times. I need for this formula in memory to copy to the side and down as a relative cell reference. And the logical test is going to be, are you not, which is less than, greater than, empty. And I'm going to use the syntax in a formula that will catch empty cells, double quote, double quote. Then I click Format. And all I'm going to do is add border. Outline to each cell, click OK, click OK. Now we have borders, but I definitely want to add some bold and an underline to the total row. Now notice conditional formatting, if we're going to use a formula for conditional formatting, it needs to check when the row has the word total in the I column. So this time, with the same range highlighted, I'm going to use the keyboard, Alt-HLN, Page Down Tab. I'm going to click on the same upper left cell but hit the F4 key one, two times. I want the column reference locked. So when the formula copies to the side, it's still looking at I, which is the column that has the word total. But the row reference is allowed to move until it bumps into that row with the word total. And I'm going to say, are you equal to, in double quotes, and this is where I get in trouble because I have to spell it right, but total. So only one row will get true values. And let's format, font, bold, and the underline will be double. Click OK, click OK. And there's our dynamic report. If I add some new data to the table, when I click below the table and paste, the dynamic reports update. Here's bonus number one. I want to create a spilled formula here that will take each individual count and compare it to the total at the bottom. So in the top cell, equal sign, left arrow, and I'm getting cell J4. That's where the formula lives. And then I type the spilled range operator. And bam, I get the whole spilled array. Now we're going to divide by. And we have a couple ways that we could get the denominator. One is I could just get the rows of the original column. That gives me the total count. And when I hit Enter, whoa, I don't know what's going on there. I'm going to apply the general number formatting to wipe away that date with Control, Shift, Grave, Accent. Now I'd like to show you a different way to do this. We went back to the original data set, which is probably the most efficient way. But I got to show you how to actually grab something from just a section of a spilled array. And instead of the drop function we used in this column, I'm going to use the take function. We give it the same spilled array, comma, and it has the same two arguments as drop. So if I put minus 1, it'll always take the last row from this dynamic spilled array, which is always going to be our total row. And so close parentheses, take. And in fact, we could highlight F9 to evaluate. And sure enough, it got the total at the bottom. Control-Z. And when I hit Enter, the results spill. Now, I'd actually like conditional formatting on this column also. But I don't want to redo it. So I'm going to highlight the same range as before. And we use relative and mixed cell references. So the conditional formatting rules we built with formulas in this column will work perfectly on this column. So right click, and we're just going to use the paintbrush or format painter. Click, and then very carefully click in the top cell. Now with that same range selected, I'm going to apply some percent number formatting with two decimals. And bam, there we go. Now, here's bonus number two. What if you don't have the latest beta version with VStack, which, by the way, it should be out in a few months, and it is worth the wait. What if you just have sort and unique in Microsoft 365? Well, no problem. We can do it the old school way. We use let to define a variable v for the sorted unique list. And then we count how many items are in that sorted unique list. And then we use the if instead of 
vstack. We build a sequence of numbers which is one more than the total count of the sorted unique list. And we say, hey, how many of you are greater than the total count? Well, the only number in that sequence that is greater than is the very last number. That'll be the total row. So the only place that gets a true, which is the last cell in the column, will get the text total. The rest of the values in that sequence get the actual counts. So that's how we used to use the if to stack two things up. Now for days, we can use count ifs just like we did. But remember, if we highlight this and F9, that's an array of numbers including a 0. And Excel interprets any non-zero number as true. And the only number that's considered false is 0. And since 0 is going to be at the bottom and the rest of those are trues, Control Z. We actually put that variable, which is count ifs, in the logical test, it'll get an array of trues with one false at the end. So for true, we put all the counts. And the only thing that gets false is I'm going to add up all of those frequencies to get the total. All right, in this video, we saw the new school, which is these functions in Microsoft 365. And we saw some new, new school functions like take, Drop and VStack. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. All right, we'll see you next. Oh, wait a second. Next video, that's going to be an awesome video. We're actually going to see how to do the reverse of going from a column of values and creating a frequency distribution. We're going to be given a frequency distribution, and I need to get back to the structure of the full column. All right, we'll see you next video.